Chances are, if you're watching this, you already believe several things about branding. For example, you already believe that it matters. For example, you'd probably think that if you had a better, more compelling brand, that you'd have more traction in your market space and therefore you'd be getting more customers, which would mean that you'd be generating more revenue, right? You probably also believe that if you had a better brand, that you'd be able to charge better prices, which would mean that you have more margin, which would mean that you'd have more profit. Chances are you also believe that if you had a better brand, that you'd probably be able to attract better talent and probably keep that talent for a longer span of time. And you probably also believe that if you had a better brand, that you'd have a better asset in your company and you'd be able to generate a better multiple if you wanted to sell your company. I mean, like you already believe all of those things. That's the good news. But you're also probably watching this because you're thinking, but how do I actually build a more compelling brand? Well, if that's your question, I'm going to answer it in just a second. Now, before I answer it, though, I do need to make sure that we're on the same page when we're talking about branding. When we're talking about branding, we're not talking about your logo. We're not talking about your colors. We're not talking about any of that stuff. What we're talking about is your reputation. That's your brand. It's what people say about you when you're not in the room. That is your brand. Okay, that's the reputation we want to talk about. The good news is that you have the ability to help shape that, but that is your brand. Now, when someone thinks about your company, by the way, you don't have complete authority or power over that, right? For, for example, when you hear the word Apple computer, uh, which is now Apple, what do you think? Well, if you like Apple, I'm an Apple fanboy, you probably have a lot of very positive associations with the brand. But if you hate Apple, you also probably have a bunch of negative associations. So you can't control the entire market, but you can help shape a number of the people in there to help generate a lot more revenue, a lot more profit, and uh, be able to create a better multiple. So remember, it's your reputation, but you don't have complete control over the reputation. You can just try to influence it, and that's what we're gonna talk about here. So now you wanna know some strategies. I'm gonna give you five of them today that can help you build a more compelling brand for your company. The first one is this. You need to realize that it's all engineered. It's all engineered. Way too many business owners and entrepreneurs think that branding is something that just is. Like, it's your reputation. Whatever it is, it is. But that's not true. Branding is about strategy, and strategy means that you get to choose what you want to be, which may not be who you've been. So just because your company's been around for four years or 14 years or 40 years is somewhat irrelevant unless you want it to continue the brand. You can make a decision today to completely change your brand, and then you just have to be consistent on the brand. But whatever it has been in the past doesn't mean that it has to be in the future. So the critical question for you is, like, what do you want your brand to be? You know, a good example of this that you might be able to relate to is Dr. Phil. So if you know any of his history, Dr. Phil was a jury consultant. Then he helped Oprah, got on Oprah. People liked him. So then he ended up creating a new brand, not jury consultant, but TV personality who's using psychology to help people with conflicts and other issues. And then he decides that he wants to get into the weight loss world. And then he starts selling weight loss stuff. And guess what? That his, that brand changed. Even when you're looking at Dr. Phil and thinking he doesn't look really healthy himself, but he changed the brand. He engineered every part of that. And so you can change whatever the brand is that you have to what you want it to be. So what do you want your brand to be? Remember, it's all engineered. It's not just what is, it's what you decide you want it to be. And if you get that, you can completely change your brand and make it something unique. Now, that leads us to the second thought. So once you understand that it's all engineered, the second thought, the second key here is that you need to differentiate on something that urgently matters to your target market and that they that is valuable to them. So if you want to create a brand that gets traction, it has to be different. You've got to get out of the commodity trap. So you don't want to be just kind of like somebody else or any of your competitors. You don't want to be like 5 or 10% different. You want to be significantly different. But that differentiation has to be something that they actually care about. So, for example, let's say you're creating a product and you decide, well, everyone's product is, you know, orange and, and red. Uh, I'm going to make mine fuchsia. Well, if people don't really care about fuchsia, it doesn't make any difference, right? It'd be different, but it's not something people care about. You need to find something that the people in your marketplace really care about. So if they really care about, for example, speed, and you decide that our brand now is going to you know, respond to every customer inquiry within 60 minutes, let's say. Well, that might really matter to your target market, unless you find out that your target market really doesn't care about speed, right? So you have to figure out what do they want and how do I focus in on what they really want? And you want to make sure it's an urgent want, not a nice to have. 
Now, if you're not familiar with the metaphor between uh, vitamin and aspirin in marketing, here's the difference. If somebody is in the nice to have category, they're like a vitamin. If you run out of vitamins, you don't run to the store to fill them up. You might get them the next week when you go shopping. You might forget a couple times and then order them a month or two later. But if you have a headache and you run out of aspirin, you immediately get in your car and you go. So you always want to be in the aspirin the business, the, the company that somebody urgently wants. So if you're going to differentiate, why not figure out what in our market do people urgently want? And then let's become the best at delivering that in a unique way. So if you differentiate, you're going to do a much better job. You don't want to be like everyone else, but you have to make sure it's an urgent want and that it's something that actually matters to them. So that's number two. The third key then, if you really want to build a more compelling brand, is you need to make sure that you ensure consistency, ensure consistency. This is another major problem for most business owners and entrepreneurs, because in general, what they want to do is they want to say, hey, we get, you know, into the ballpark, you know, most of the time, like, you know, like 80 percent of the time we really deliver on our brand promise. And by the way, most people forget that a brand isn't just a reputation. It's also a promise, because if this is your reputation, the assumption is that if I work with your company, I'm going to have that same experience. So it's both a reputation and it's a promise. So if the promise is that you're going to you know, respond within 60 minutes and 80 percent of the time you do that, guess what? 20 percent of the time you're not, which is not good, which means it's going to be hard for the people who are in that 20 percent to actually believe your brand. I always like to think about it like a restaurant. A restaurant might have to serve, let's say, 300 meals. But the restaurateur knows that we're only as good as our last plate of food. You can't say, hey, we delivered 280 good meals or 290 great meals, because if that's true, then you had 10 or 15 or 20 of them that were really bad or that didn't meet the brand reputation. So you're only as good as your last plate, which means that for your company, you have to figure out how do we ensure consistency so that 100 percent of the time that somebody encounters our company or uses our product or uses our service, that they're having the kind of experience that our brand is telling them that they're going to have with us, whatever that is. So that's the good news. You can engineer it, but whatever you decide to engineer, you better ensure consistency all the time. Because if you're not, then people are going to not trust your brand and you want people to trust your brand. So what can you do to ensure consistency across the board with all of your people? This is why systems become so important and why you want to make sure that everyone's fulfilling your systems 100% of the time. Now, that's the first three. Here we go to number four. And by the way, if you're enjoying this, make sure you hit the like button or the subscribe button. So number four is you need to make sure you put money behind your brand. Put money behind your brand. A lot of business owners and entrepreneurs like kind of thinking about their brand voice and the brand colors and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but then they don't really put enough money behind it or any money in many cases behind making sure that that's the message people get out. Now, uh, in general, you don't want to just spend money on branding. You want to do more direct response marketing, but you can merge the two together. They don't have to be separate. You can do both of them at the same time. And I'll give you an example back in uh, my old church days. So back in the 90s, we did a lot of direct mail. And there were a couple brand messages I wanted to get across. One was that we were life changing. So we were relevant, life changing. So our tagline was absolutely positively life changing. We said that in every direct mail piece that went out. Everyone heard it. And if you ask people in our community, what's that church? Oh, that's the absolutely positively life changing church because they heard it over and over and over again, right? We put money behind the brand. We also wanted them to pick up other things. For example, part of our brand is we wanted to be friendly, right? So we had, and, and normal, by the way. So we'd send out mailers, but they had lots of pictures, not one or two pictures, but, you know, like 20, four, you know, pictures in a mailer, lots of snippets of people in our church having fun of different ages, right? Because we wanted them to see, hey, this is really a fun place. And it's a place we can bring our kids or our youth or if we're young adults, et cetera, we could all go and hang out because these people are fun, they're cool, and they look normal. Uh, so that was in there. Uh, the other thing we wanted to make sure is that we were a diverse church because we lived in one of the most diverse uh, communities in the country, in Germantown, Maryland. And so we made, I made sure that every time we were taking pictures that we were making sure that we had a, a good cross-section of diverse people. Now, we started out as a 98% white church, and when I left, we were about 55% white. And all that happened, I would say, because from our direct mail, we kept saying, this is the brand of the church, that we're multicultural. And guess what? People picked up on that, and they felt comfortable coming. So whatever the brand is that you want to get out, put some money behind it. We put a lot of money behind direct mail. Uh, no other church around us spent anywhere close to what we spent. They would try it once or twice and then give up. 
we spent a lot of money because we wanted to control the narrative. You can do the exact same thing. So if you pick your brand, remember it's all engineered, just put some money behind it to make sure that the message gets out so people think what you want them to think about you and your company. That's number four. So it's all engineered, right? You're, you're differentiating on something that matters. You got a consistency. You're not putting some money behind it. The fifth and final idea I want to give you today is make sure you use other people to uh, promote your brand. Use other people to promote your brand. And what I mean by that, and you've seen this before, is the whole testimonial issue. In other words, if you're saying something about your company, other people are, are not going to trust you as much. They're going to be somewhat skeptical because they think you're going to talk great about your company. It's the same reason why when you go to buy something on Amazon, you look at the reviews and you read some reviews because you want to know what do other people think about this, not just what Amazon thinks about it, right? So you want to know what other people are thinking. Now, here's what I want to give you as a guide here. What you want to do when you're getting testimonials is not just take testimonials. You want to ask a series of questions. So when I was doing this years ago, what I would do is I'd add, and I did all the writing on this, is I would ask questions of each one of the people. So I'd usually pick three people on the back of our uh, mailers. And then I would interview them and I'd ask them a set of questions, four or five different questions, each one the same questions. And then I would get a bunch of stuff that they all talked about. And they might all talk about the same things, but I would then just pick and choose because no one wants to read paragraphs, right? They only want to read a sentence or two or maybe three at max. And so then I would say, okay, this one here talks about life changing. So I'm going to I'll pick the life changing part out of this one. And this one talks about how family friendly it was and how, you know, it's easy for the kids to get connected. Okay, we're going to use that one. And this person here talked about both of those things, but they also talked about how much they love this uh, diversity and how they felt comfortable as a... Um, mixed race couple, right? So I would pick and choose based on what we wanted in the brand message to make sure that those testimonials were re in, uh, reinforcing the actual brand that I wanted people to have. So don't just use testimonials per se, and you don't want just a handful. You want 40, 50, 100, 200, 500, whatever number of testimonies you can get, the more the merrier. And then big, just pick and choose the phrase or sentence or two sentences that hit on the brand thing that you want to communicate, and that will help you build better communication and, and people are going to identify that brand. Oh, that's the, the church or that's the business or that's the product or that's the service that does X, Y, or Z. It's so easy to do. So there you go. Five things that you can do to be able to build a more compelling brand. Make sure you remember that it's all engineered. Don't worry about your past. Decide what you want to be known for. And then secondly, make sure you differentiate what you want to be known for in a way that it really matters to them and, and it focuses on something that they urgently want. Make sure that you ensure consistency so that anytime anyone has an experience with your company, that brand promise is being the brand delivered. Then make sure you put enough money behind it so that people actually get to hear the message over and over again. You can't hear it once or twice. They have to hear it repeatedly over and over and over and over again so that they begin to believe that that really is the brand. And then finally, make sure you harness the power of using other people to build the brand. Pick those testimonial pieces that help reinforce the brand. Put all that together and you will build a more compelling brand. So there you go. Five keys to building a more compelling brand. Now, if you really enjoyed this, I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button, whether you're listening by video or listening by podcast. And then also, uh, one of the, my gifts to you is I've created an entire course called the Three Week MBA, Three Week MBA, Three Number Three, threeweekmba.com. And it's 21 of the best lessons I can gift to you about how you can grow and scale a great business. So make sure you check out threeweekmba.com. And then, Come back here next week because my commitment to you week in and week out is to give you actionable ideas and insights that can help you grow and scale a great business. So until next week, to your Accelerated Success, Bruce out.